Hi, everyone. Welcome. Glad that you're joining us this afternoon. We're just uh, letting folks uh, come on into the virtual room. Before we get started, uh, we'll give some housekeeping and a land acknowledgement before we formally begin. I'm going to start at 30. There it is. We're at 30, Nancy. <laughs> All right, well, welcome this afternoon. Uh, a few housekeeping notes before we get started. So we're gonna be using some simple tools in this hands-on workshop. We're gonna be using text chat as well as a web browser. And we're gonna be doing a short breakout activity, giving folks a chance to connect with each other and share your ideas. Live transcriptions are enabled. So please feel free to enable them if you, you find them helpful and disable them if you find them distracting. Uh, please use chat or unmute your mic to make a comment. Uh, but we ask that if you have a question, please put them in chat and one of us will be able to address them. If you do have a burning comment, then please raise your hand. And uh, cameras are optional, uh, but very welcome for this session, especially during the breakout. And the session will be recorded. So um, Nancy and I would like to acknowledge uh, Conestoga College campus is are located on the Haldimand track, uh, which is the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee people. We recognize, honor, and respect these nations as the traditional stewards of the land uh, and the water on which Conestoga is now present. This land acknowledgement helps uh, me to better understand the history of Indigenous peoples here, especially as I come from a different area, the Okanagan, uh, which is the traditional and unceded territory of the Silex Okanagan peoples. And we invite uh, folks to add their peoples and territories on which you are currently located to the chat to honor them as well. All right, and with that, uh, we shall begin. Promising practices for teaching hybrid micro-credentials. Uh, welcome to this hands-on workshop. My name is Elan Paulson and uh, Nancy Nelson, who is personing the slides right now, have both uh, developed and are currently delivering uh, what our institution would consider to be hybrid, uh, asynchronous and online synchronous micro-credentials that lead to an accredited certificate in post-secondary teaching. We are supporting the uh, faculty members as well as the institution as a whole uh, as we transition to hybrid programs and courses in winter 2022. So the scope of our workshop today includes a brief reflection on how we can combine the power of hybrid delivery and micro-credentials and how to teach in a hybrid micro-learning space. So while there are many related topics uh, that we could get into, including micro-credential program design, et cetera, our vision for today is to simply reflect on where to get started when you're thinking about teaching in a hybrid micro course, which has any combination of synchronous or asynchronous components. So our outcomes today are to identify a for learner-centered micro-credentials guiding and evidence-based planning tool for hybrid micro-credentials and other programs, uh, a tool that you can bring back to your own folks. And we'll discuss promising practices for designing micro-credential courses in a hybrid format. Got a little switch there, but you get the picture. All right, so our, the slide that, that Nancy is showing here uh, is not an image that we've designed. We've taken a screenshot from the eCampus Ontario Foresight Report to emphasize the importance of learner-centered teaching as our context. So um, you can see this is a, um, this uh, X and Y axis uh, has uh, low and high flexibility on the Y and then educator-centered and learner-centered on the X. So we'd like you to, to take a moment to identify what is your institution's current state with respect to hybrid teaching and learning methods. So where, are, where, is, where would you say that your institution is centered right now? Now, there's no wrong answers to that question at the moment, as, as many things are in flux right now, but we have a broader goal at Conestoga College to move all types of hybrid teaching and learning to the top right quadrant, this future state, which is described uh, in the literature as uh, high impact learning. So the methods of learning that are in the top right quadrant, inquiry-based, experiential, service learning, cooperative learning, game-based learning can be applied to micro-credentials as well as to other longer courses.
Anything to add, Nancy, there? No, I don't think so. I think, I think that's great. So what we want to talk about today are some of the, the teaching principles that we want to consider if we're thinking about moving into that top right quadrant, into that learner-centered um, hybrid micro-credential land. And so four of the main things we need to think about is, is first of all, when we're thinking micro-credential, obviously the word small comes into, into play. Um, but we need to, to see the big picture first, but then think small in order to have the big impact. So it's kind of big to small to big. And in doing that, we need to be very selective about what we choose to include in that micro-credential, in that, and, and how we distribute things within that micro-credential. We need to really focus on learning. Um, we sometimes get caught up because we're being asked to compress or, or to think small we sometimes forget about the learning piece and we think about the teaching piece. And it's really important for us here to say, what are the things our students really need to take away from this small chunk of curriculum that is leading to a, a, a bigger goal? And with that comes the need to really focus on the outcomes that we specified for that unit, whatever they happen to be. And so here we're thinking at that, that higher level of outcome. So, uh, if you're teaching a course, it would be that course level uh, outcome. And what, is, what are the main takeaways from your students? What do you need to really bring to the table or have them bring to the table? And in terms of doing that, I'd ask you to think about three areas in particular. There are, are other factors we would need to consider, but these are kind of the starting point. So the first is, is this a theoretical concept or is it sort of abstract or or is it more a practical skill? Or is it a balance of those? And how do we need to balance that if, if it is such? Then we need to think about the difficulty of that task. We all know as educators that there are some things that are very, very difficult for students to grasp. Um, they might be things that students will be able to mimic what we're doing. They're, they can, they can, they seem to seem to have a grasp of it, but they you know if you talk to them they really don't don't quite have it yet and then there are some some really important concepts or key concepts that might be different from those really challenging ones that we need to make sure that we're paying particular attention to as we start to think about how we put these together and then the kind of the the obvious are there any special pieces of equipment um, that our students would need to have access to in order to determine what would go into which aspect of that hybrid world. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put you to work for, for a few minutes. So what I'm going to drop in the chat, let me get back here. Already got to see you, Nancy. Thank you. I appreciate that. So there's a link to um, an H5P interactive that when, if you go to onto the second page will look something like what you can see on the right side of my screen. And so we're going to have you work through this, starting individually, and then we're going to have you work with a couple of colleagues. And the outcome for this particular micro-credential that we're talking about is uh, growing plants or botany, wh whatever level you would like to choose. The outcome we're going to have you focus on is growing a healthy kitchen herb plant. And we've tried to choose something that most of us can relate to so that we can we have at least a basic working knowledge of and so we can use that the way we're going to determine whether or not the student you being the student or maybe you being the the educator in this role is whether or not you've mastered this concept is to be able to use that herb in a meal sometime within the next two months so that would be your uh, deliverable so on that first slide i'm going to give you 30 seconds to write down those key concepts and skills you think every student should need to have. Feels free to, if you don't have access to the H5P Interactive or you would prefer to use a piece of paper, go right ahead. But I'm going to start a timer now and give you 30 seconds to think about what the student is going to need to know, what the student will have to be able to do, and then how, they, how you will be able to see them demonstrate that uh, learning outcome that we have to be able to use that herb in a meal. 
So my timer is starting now and then I'll, I'll call out and tell you when to stop, please. So go. Just a quick note, if you're using the H5P uh, tool for the first time, uh, selecting the blue, the, the gray bar at the lower end of the H5P in your web browser will advance the first slide to the second slide. Okay, and stop, please. So hopefully you got down a couple of concepts and a couple of skills that the student should, should be learning during that time. And what I'm going to have you do now is go to the next page and we're going to, ha we're going to put you in groups of three to four people in a breakout room. If you would prefer not to go into a breakout room, feel free to stay in this main room with Elan and with me. And we're going to then kind of work together to say, what do we need to teach? So we've come up with these. You're going to pick one from the, the things that you've come up with, and you're going to focus on delivering one 20 minute segment that will become part of this larger micro credential. And so for that, I would like you to answer three questions. What needs to be taught? What examples you'll use to help support the student learning? and what tasks you will ask the students to do in order to start working on that skill or concept. So if we could open the breakout rooms now, that would be wonderful. And those three and keep... I was just going to say, I will give you, um, with two minutes left to go, so will, will you do five minutes, six minutes in total, with, four, with two minutes left to go, I'll send a message or someone will send a message saying two minutes left and then please wait in your breakout room until you're brought back. Again, if you'd rather stay here, please feel free to stay with us.
Tanya, could you send the two minute two minute left warning please to the breakout rooms? Okay, Tanya, is everyone back? Okay, so welcome back everyone. I hope you had an interesting discussion of talking about plants and how we could, could create a small, a, a micro-credential unit on that. Um, what I would like to do now is to take a minute to think about and and talk about what you came up with so um, for someone that stayed in the main room with us or someone that went out into a breakout room how did you go about the process what did you decide um, so if we ha we can have a brave soul willing to share with us that would be that would be wonderful No takers. Okay, well, I'm going to ask you then to go to your chat window, please. And I would like you to think about what I talked about in terms of those, um, the principles at the beginning. So thinking small in order to go big, being selective. So how did you, what process did you think about? Um, how did you focus on the learner and how did you focus on the outcomes? So if you could pick one of those and in the chat window post, how did you apply that principle as you thought about that micro-credential?
We have a very quiet group this afternoon, Elaine. Okay, well, I'm going to let Elan talk a little bit about how we take that those ideas and bring them to our micro credentials. I do want to mention that uh, Selena has uh, put in the chat that, that discussing the concepts that need to be taught, the types of herbs, the sunlight requirements, the soil. And so uh, the, the goal of the activity in part is to draw attention to the fact that uh, there is substantial prior knowledge and a, and a range of components that need to be considered when teaching micro-credentials that are, uh, especially if you're teaching in an outcomes-based education program, um, you know, one that is really trying to uh, demonstrate progression towards specific skill uh, or knowledge. And, uh, and so micro-credentials require us to really hone into uh, the key elements and, what, and, and also strip back what is necessary for students to know versus what is nice to know. And I think that uh, Selena's points around uh, all of the different uh, variations of herbs, the different sunlight requirements, the soil, these are all sort of the preconditions and the elements that need to be understood before the, the skill of learning how to grow a plant can take place. So uh, in applying uh, this, um, this H5P activity, to my own context, um, where I'm teaching a micro credential on faculty uh, manage um, on interpersonal managing and minimizing interpersonal conflict in group work. Uh, this tool helped me to really think about if I wanted to help faculty uh, reflect on what early intervention means. And, uh, and, and, and when it should be done for the benefit of, of learners to achieve the learning outcomes in the group, then um, first I need to, uh, to dial back and be very specific about what it is I'm trying to achieve. So here, the, the concept that I'm focusing on is earlier intervention in the student group. And then I'm modeling the example by identifying the problems with late or no faculty intervention. So before we can even talk about the importance of early intervention and the ways of doing it, we need to elicit what, what faculty's assumptions and perhaps biases are around intervention. Some faculty want to intervene early in group work while others think that it's struggle and storming is part of the group work process. But then being able to highlight um, some aspects of Burdett's article where um, she challenges that assumption that later no intervention is the best way to teach students uh, to manage group work uh, and showing some research to the um, some of the unintended consequences can help prime a group to be able to think about if given a mini case scenario, what level intervention would be necessary given the various dynamics of the group issue. And then uh, what I have to do uh, in order to continue thinking through about how to apply this, uh, these concepts and these principles to this micro-credential is to, uh, I'm gonna, I've decided to keep the key problems with late or no intervention, but then really ground those ideas in one particular case. And it's not even a big case, it's a little mini case scenario. Then I've decided because it's nice to do, but not necessary to do in that particular moment to really hook faculty in terms of thinking about what are these, the issues are around minimizing faculty or student um, interpersonal conflict is to think is to move to asynchronous. What is early intervention in student group conflict? Have them read the full or at least access the full article and then be able to apply it to their own case. So this tool has really required me to think about what learning-centered activities need to come first and how I can really focus on the key aspects of this, um, this teaching concept in order to achieve the learning outcomes. And then I can wipe this H5P clean and then I can do it again for the next learning outcome in the, in the micro-credential. In a six hour, two week micro credential, uh, which I teach, this is one of the six courses. I have to be very particular and very specific and, and all of my decision making around how I'm going to teach is determined by um, these key principles. Thanks, Alain. Uh, so now we're going to kind of wrap up by 
going back and saying, and there were some interesting comments in the chat about backwards design and working from the outcomes to the learning, which is really important. And that's what we're saying in this, in this first summary point is that is, is really what your focus should be. It's about the students. It's, it's not about us. And we need to be very ruthlessly selective to make sure we're getting the appropriate depth, understanding and, and timing of all the elements that we're building into the micro-credential. And then kind of our key takeaway is that connection between big and small. So we need to see the big picture. We need to think small, which in turn is going to lead to big changes for that high impact learner center teaching and learning that we would like to happen in all our courses, whether it be a, a hybrid micro-credential or whether it, it be a full um, course in any of the de delivery modes we've been talking about over the last few days. So we'll leave a, a list of references up for you. Um, we'd be more than happy to take any questions if you if you have them for us. We've got one question in the in the chat. Given that learning like this would be largely self-directed and always requires prior knowledge, would it be safe to assume that virtually every micro-credential should de facto have a carefully curated reading and media list in the context of micro-credential design standards, of course? What do you think, Nancy? I think the careful curation is, is, is good. Um, I would say that it would depend on the context, whether that would take the forms of readings or other types of, of curated resources. I think to, in order to meet the needs of the, the diverse students we have in our classroom, we should be willing to go beyond the traditional and into some of the non-traditionals to uh, make sure that our, our students are able to tap into what we're hoping them to learn. Yeah, I guess I would just add too that I think that drawing on students prior um, experiences and knowledge is also something that can be tapped. Uh, sometimes the reading and media list can come first to establish a common ground and prior knowledge, but depending on the, um, the design of the micro credential that may not always be possible. So sometimes meeting with students first and uh, getting their input feedback ideas can then prime them for future uh, independent uh, or self-directed learning. Any other questions or comments? All right, so there's a question. Uh, I might have missed this. Is your tool in the H5P studio? So it was designed in the eCampus Ontario um, H5P studio, which makes it freely available for, um, for folks to, uh, to use as well as to repurpose. Shall we put it in one more time? Let's put it in one more time. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, we really appreciate your time on the, in on this very condensed uh, topic uh, or time frame for a very large and broad topic. But hopefully, it gives you a tool and some key principles to think about when you are preparing to teach in your hybrid micro credentials. Thank you very much.